friends, thanks so much for tuning in. I love to talk about staying power. I really do like the practical side of makeup and just, you know, what things are going to stay on your skin all day that you do not need to touch up. Fairly recently, I did a video focused on all drugstore products that have those long wearing claims, and we really figured out by day's end which things were wearing well on the skin, and in the end, came away with some really strong product recommendations with that video. Well, here, I just want to focus on the overall, so drugstore and high end, like top 10 things that are not going to require a touch up from you. Things that are going to wear all day and look good doing it, okay? I'm going to be putting them on as I go, but yeah, there's going to be 10 key things looking across the board at drugstore and high end that I think are just flawless in terms of their wear. Um, so I've already prepped my skin with my skincare and I use this too as my primer. I freaking love this stuff, this Maybelline Perfector 4-in-1 Glow Makeup. I wear the shade light and I mean the skin looks really pretty after you put that on, but I always have good staying power when I use this as my base. I don't know what it is. It's not really like it has a super long wear claim, but it just works that way. Okay, number one, the CoverGirl Outlast Extreme Wear Light Airbrush Finish Foundation. So I've always thought this was a strong product for staying power, but this past weekend it was absolutely completely proven to me because I wore this all day long and then got completely poured on, just drenched. And I looked at my makeup again afterwards and guys, I, I shot a TikTok after that and the makeup looked fresh, okay? Like all I did was like dried myself off a little bit. The face still looked good. It was crazy. I mean, I was completely wet. And it was like not only that, but it had gone through like an entire day from like 5 a.m. to when was the rain? Like 3, 3.30 in the afternoon. I wear the shade Natural Beige in this. This is just really good stuff. The whole Red Cap family of products, I've talked about them before. There's a concealer, there's a powder. They're all really good in terms of staying power. I'm going to wear a full pump of this, close to a full pump. Sometimes I don't always feel myself hitting rock bottom with that pump, but my goodness. It's just one of those products where, yeah, I knew you were good because you were getting through whole days, but I hadn't worked it that hard, you know, as I did that day on Sunday. And it kind of drove me to really think about the products that wear so well. Um, this is my Dollar Tree sponge here. I love the surface area on the bottom. It's got a real big, like, flat zone there. And it blends stuff in so smoothly and evenly. I've really been liking that um, anytime I've got something full coverage to use. And that's another thing. The coverage on this is just beautiful, too. But yet it's also not going to look too heavy and thick. Um, they call it light airbrush finish, which is interesting. And it does just have a really ultra flattering look on the skin. It's not one of those full coverage foundations where you're like, okay, bracing for the dryness and you've got to really watch yourself on application and be so, so careful with how it gets on the skin because it's going to look thick and cakey. It really won't. But full coverage, yes, you can expect that and it is going to wear all day long and through some stuff. Honestly, I think I got rained on twice. Yeah, I got rained on a little bit when we were leaving church as well. Number two product that is not going to require a touch up that is going to look really Really flawless all day is the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Concealer. This concealer is really, really at the top of its game, I think, for looking fresh on the skin all day long um, and not looking heavy, okay? It's a fine line we walk. We want the coverage, but we don't want it to look like a lot has been put there. I'm wearing the shade Vanilla and I'm putting it everywhere concealer is needed for me today, okay? So I'm gonna get some brightness out of this shade, but I'm going to get coverage too. Another little tip that I have, um, you know, I'm kind of using a beauty blender today, but I can take a brush, a smallish brush, blend it out. You've seen me do this a lot before, but we work on that surface area. We make it take up more room, and then we start dabbing it in with the sponge. Get around that nose. Then coming in here, and instead of just going directly over tiny dots with this big old sponge, we are now going over a nice smoothed out surface area. But I've been just super impressed with this one. I feel like I can be content with the coverage, but it's not looking like a lot. And even when I check up on it later in the day, I'm like, you know, 
It's not really looking like it's collecting a lot. It's not looking like it's creating unsightly thickness on the under eye. And I do set it as well. And I'm just always really satisfied with the look. And it's a freshness thing. I mean, you could argue with a lot of products. Yeah, it's technically still there at day's end, but I want it to look good. Like I want to see the face and think, okay, I'm not in need of a touch up here. The product is present, but it also looks good as it sits there. Okay, just making sure all the little areas are blended, but you see that nice coverage? And it doesn't look like a lot, does it? I think I'm ready to make a statement about loose powder and what maybe the very ultimate best loose powder is. And I believe it's this Laura Mercier Ultra Blur. It's the Translucent Loose Setting Powder Ultra Blur. It's talc free. I feel like it can be worn over literally any concealer, any base look and look good and do exactly what I want it to do by setting also make the look seem a little more flawless, but I think it plays a role in everything looking fresh all day. I remember saying quite a while back that I felt like this was a step up from the original Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Powder, which is a great product, but I really, the more I use it and the variety of concealers I put it on top of, I'm really convinced that this is the stuff. There are some great drugstore translucent loose powders, don't get me wrong. I love my Wet n Wild Photo Focus. I love Maybelline Fit Me, but this is so fine. It does kind of do that blurring thing that it says. And then, you know, where we really get into the staying power is just the fact that it's looking good all day. I think it's helping the evenness of wear of the whole look wherever I'm putting it, but this is part of the reason along with this, that I'm looking up at my under eye at three in the afternoon and thinking, that doesn't look too bad. That doesn't look crusty. That doesn't look dry. It doesn't look heavy. I think this loose powder is quite important, actually. So I apply it like you just saw, and then I can take my little Morphe under eye bullet brush, dust around, you know, get rid of any excess, but I have a really smoothed out look, very even coverage, nothing looks dull or dim. I've tried so many like kind of brightening effect powders on the under eye, but look how this is just smoothing. And I would have to say it's really doing the blurring thing. I've given it some pretty high praise before, but I think now in the conversation of staying power and what are truly the things that last the longest and look the best, this really shines in that arena. I did not specifically name a bronzer. The bronzer I'm gonna use I do think wears well, but it wasn't really part of my top 10 countdown or whatever. I'm just going to use this Persona stick in Dune. I just really am into this tone big time right now. It's so easy to swipe it on and get just the perfect contoured look. And you know what I realized over the weekend as I was drawing some comparisons? I realized that it's actually lighter than both Terra and Summer from M Cosmetics. And it's just a little surprising to me that I've enjoyed it so much, but it's just so good. It's so workable for me. And this is just my Sephora 56 brush, just going over the skin, getting it all in. See how pretty that is? Like, it just always looks good. I love that stuff. It's got a little sunniness to it, you know, but it's not in the least orangey, and it's just the perfect tone. So at this point, we've got three products that have been named um, in our long-wearing countdown. We've got the CoverGirl Foundation, the NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop Concealer, the Laura Mercier Loose Powder, and now we're gonna move into a blush. It's actually a lip and cheek product that I think is outstandingly long-wearing. Part of the reason why it's a pretty intense tone, but it can definitely be counted on. It wears really well. It's the Ami Cole, I'm saying it right now, um, Desert Date Cream Multi-Stick. The shade is Spice, so this is the plummy one. I own several of these. This was the first one I got. I love and adore the richness in this shade. It is so beautiful and it's great on the lips too. I'm going to have a different product to discuss for lips today. It makes such a pretty cohesive look when you do that multitasking, but why does it work so well on the cheeks? I think it's because it's a little drier stick than a lot of my cream products are. It's a matte finish and it's also got a lot of strong pigment. Not a product that's going to be drifting around and away on your skin. It's just really, really good. 
you saw how dark it was when it first went on, okay? It looks super plummy. It shears out and you get like a kind of a soft plummy rose sort of thing. A little more pink comes out in it. You can adjust, you can add. For it to be like a matte stick and be that easily blendable for me, I think that's also saying something. But you can get these sticks from Sephora. I have um, the shades Flame. I believe the orangey reddish one is called, yeah, Flame and Dune is a bit more nude. So there are options. I'm just added a little bit more down here toward the apple of the cheek because I was more up here with it at first. Beautiful blush, my friends, and just does great for all day wear. All right, friends, I went ahead and filled in my brows. I used my CoverGirl brow pencil and the Kosas Air Brow to set that, but those weren't really in my countdown, so that's why we breezed through it. And we're going to move on to product number five, and it is Milani Eyeshadow Primer. This is one of those things where it's like, yeah, you're going to see the finished look, and it's not going to scream, I'm wearing Milani Eyeshadow Primer, but it is so important for staying power, I feel. If you're going to take the time to do do eyeshadow, you might as well have it last. And I think a big key to this product is the amount used. You don't want to put on too much. So I'm getting that much squeezed out on my finger and that's what's going to go on between two eyes. Okay, so I just kind of get it on each finger and then you look like you've got just maybe a slight glaze on two fingers. And then you're first and foremost going to swipe that onto your lid and you're going to feel like after that amount, okay, there's still some, maybe some extra moisture there. You're gonna feel yourself blend it through your crease. Yeah, who knew we needed an eye primer tutorial? <laughs> um, through your crease and then dab whatever is left up to the brow bone, okay? So your priority zone is that lid and crease area. Whatever is left gets placed up toward the brow. This is not that kind of really opaque blanket out type of eye primer. Um, you might find it gives a slight bit of coverage to your lids, but that's not really what it's all about. It's about um, being that base that can grab the eyeshadows, make them look more vibrant, and also make them last longer. I truly feel it's the best in the business. It definitely has outperformed different high-end eye primers, other drugstore ones that I've used. It's just the kind of thing I don't want to be without. So when we're getting into that staying power conversation. Um, while there are some things like foundation or blush or powder where it's much more obvious, this is a bit more under the radar for the look, but it's important. Product number six in my top 10 is an overall brand of eyeshadow. I said this in a video recently, but I feel Natasha Denona eyeshadows are so long wearing. They do a fantastic job of looking really good all day. There are a couple of other brands that I think are up there with with Natasha Denona, and I would have to say it's Patrick Ta and also Viseart. I think what these brands have in common is really strong pigmentation and a formula that's able to just go on so evenly, wear really consistently all day. I am time after time with various different Natasha Denona palettes though, I'm able to see my look at day's end and say, yep, that was really, it looks exactly the way it started. So I just grabbed for one today, one of my favorite Natasha Denona palettes. It's the My Dream palette. You'll see the palette and know why I enjoy this one so much. I'm just gonna do a basic little look with her today. Again, we're going on top of Milani eyeshadow primer, so that's always a factor. I'm gonna go up here to Carpe Diem nice matte, kind of dusty rose, and start getting that in my crease. The pigment is just so strong <laughs> with these shadows. I mean, that's a huge part of things. And you might be saying, well, can drugstore shadows last a long time too? Yeah, I can use a, do a full look with Profusion and be pretty happy with my staying power as well. But I think with Natasha Denona, it's like the identical nature of the look at day's end that I can be really, really pleased with. A little tidbit I should probably share is that I do not have especially oily lids. Some people just have very like oil producing lids and it's always a struggle. Um, to get anything to last a long time. I'd like to hear what your experience is like with Natasha Denona shadows. I don't think my eyes are naturally producing a lot of obstacles. Um, sometimes I will get watery eyes though or a little irritation going on. Not from makeup, but like with my contacts and stuff. And the shadow still holds on. So I'm just working with that one shade. I've gotten it into my crease. I've let it kind of come upward. 
I think I'm going to go into Unity right here, which is a little more, just a little softer than what we just used, a little more peachy, and um, just kind of blend that on the edge and let it really take things to nothingness, okay? Still has some color, Unity does, but a nice bit of warmth in the look right now. Um, I think I'm going to go into Risk right here. It's kind of like a little rusty. It does have some shimmer. Same crease brush. I'm just going to add that to my crease. I don't think I've used this shade in this way before, but it's pretty. I really liked this whole collection. Um, the, there was a little like cheek trio that came out. The whole look was just so pretty when you used all the factors together. Okay, there's some of that rustiness blended in. That's so pretty really giving the look some heat now. We can bring in a bare brush if you feel like any of that edge just isn't as smooth as you want it. Okay, then I say let's go up to Aspiration right here, a super dark brown. I feel like I've talked about this before, but I think there's some plum in it too, just maybe a little bit, um, and we're just dabbing that on the outer lid. The way these shadows just adhere, really nice. But yet there's still a nice blendability, and we talked about that with the Yucca palette, how, you know, we, I was using shades, like tones of green and rich green that might not lend themselves to real easy blending typically, but the look was easier than I thought it'd be. Okay, this is again Aspiration, a deep brown that I think also has a little bit of plum in it. We also have pure blackest black it's called in this palette as well which is nice okay we've taken that shade up to the crease and now we think you know pull in a crease brush or pull in a small pointed brush so we can take that even further just a little bit of aspiration on my small pointed brush and letting it come up we're thinking about shape tell me in the comments section if you've experienced the same kind of staying power success with Natasha Denona shadows, and what is your favorite Natasha Denona palette? Mmm, look at that haze. Look at that beautiful blend we're getting here. Just by taking a little extra shadow on this smaller brush and letting it just kind of come out, a little bit. I'm going back to the original crease brush I first used. I'm not adding anything extra to it and I just like to use that to blend over the edge. Maybe we do want to add a little something. I mean we have some interesting little mid-tones here. I'm gonna reapply just a little bit of Unity, that peach. Just add a little bit. And as I often do with Natasha Denona palettes, I find myself thinking, wow, isn't it coming together quickly? We're almost done. I think I'm going to use a little bit of Serenity, this taupe right here, and put some of that on like this inner lid space. Gosh, I love the big mirror too. Okay, so that's looking just like a, a cl very classic taupe center of lid. And then we'll come inward. Let's use this one called Spontaneous right down here. A little champagne number. This palette is also doing its thing without creating a bunch of fallout all over my cheeks, which I appreciate. Blended, pretty, easy, tones I like. Oh, I got an eyelash there. I need to make a wish. I am simply not let down by these eyeshadows. So really pleased with that look. I didn't choose to go under my eye with much today, but I mean, you could do some pretty hazy, smudgy things down there as well. But we are moving on to, let's see, what number are we on? Number seven is an eyeliner you can totally count on for staying power. It is the Sephora Colorful Wink It Felt Liner Waterproof. And the shade is Little Black Dress. This liner will last and last if you got a special occasion, a wedding, a funeral you name it, it is going to look intense. It's going to be juicy enough. Some people like to point out that I like the word juicy, but juicy or moist, you tell me in the comments section, what would you rather be hearing? It's got enough saturation in it to really easily go across my lash line. I mean, I've used this a lot by this point, 
and it goes over pigmented shimmery shadow with so much ease. It is a felt tip. I know there are brush tip pens out there, like I love the M Cosmetics brush tip, but this is even stronger in terms of staying power. So I'm gonna give it a little wing today. Wing it up. Nice and black and rich. It's gonna, at this point in time, do everything you're expecting it's gonna do. You know, it's gonna look dark. But the real test is how it stays 100% looking the same the entire day. And that's what it does. So you can count on this. Um, it's a very, very good eyeliner. I would say a substitution you could make here for drugstore. I know Sephora collection is like less expensive, but if you want to buy something at the drugstore that's really good, it's the Milani Stay Put Matte 17 Hour Wear Eyeliners. I think why this is edging it out a little bit is just the pen design is easier. Those are like the little traditional liquid liner inkwell type deal, which if you're comfortable with that, go for it, because those are great. As we've said many a time, those lasted through childbirth. I suspect this would as well. Two good liquid liner styles. One's just a pen, the other is, we'll call it inkwell. We got us a little wing there. For pick number eight, it is going to apply to mascara, but it's not just mascara. It's really a mascara primer slash sealer. A lot of you guys probably know what I'm about to say, but it's the Estee Lauder Little Black Primer. So what this does is, um, after I curl my lashes, I can apply this and this is going to lock in curl. So the extended wear of a curl in your lashes, that's what this is about. And then also, when you've put your mascara on top of this stuff, you can apply more and it will seal it from flaking. So it's kind of doing a one-two punch on staying power with your lashes, but but it's not an actual mascara, you know? It's not gonna bulk it up the way mascara does. It's priming, it's locking in curl, and then it's sealing it off. So to me, that's really important. The fact that it can do such important functions, but you know, it's gonna pair with a mascara of your choice. It's kind of working in this whole idea the way Milani eyeshadow primer does, right? You know, it's kind of under the surface, but it's important. Let's say it's not a false lash day, and you just really want to have the lashes looking their absolute best. Little black primer should probably be involved in the look. So often you're watching me maybe try a new mascara on this channel and it's like I'm not going to sort of cheat with this and give it all those adv extra advantages because I'm just trying to see how the new mascara works. But when it gets right down to it and you want things to look their best, this is what it's all about. I pretty much always have a backup on hand. So it's a small brush and when you first put it on, so right now I am like doing its hairspray function. I'm locking in the curl that I just did and it's not gonna look like much. Your lashes may just look a little bit darker, but it's not about a real bodybuilding thing. Tint Amplify Set is what the tube says. That's pretty accurate. It's the holding in of the curl that is so special. If that's really an issue for you, you're going to notice an impact here. And you'll notice also at day's end, your mascara will be a little more resistant to removal. Like this will be the day that you pull in your Lancome eye makeup remover. Okay, we got curl locked in on both sides now. Now put on whatever mascara you want to use. I'm going to use CoverGirl Exhibitionist Stretch and Strengthen today. Um, this was a rediscovered mascara for me recently, and I said, I think I'm going to repurchase that because I want to continue to have that on hand, and I did. Okay, so now you'll maybe be able to see a little bit more what the little black primer did because everything's standing at attention, nothing's dropping. Look at that nice upturned curl. This mascara will certainly thicken you up to the point where you can totally see what's happening. Look at those lashes. Turned up, standing at attention. I'm going to put a little Cali Ray on the lower lashes. And I guess I could use a little black primer down there because it, I'm confident it wouldn't go anywhere. But I know this works too the Revlon Color Stay Lip Liner. Choose your shade, but one of the most basic and I think essential ones to have on hand is the shade Nude. These wear so well, and it's kind of a situation where 
use this and then you can put whatever you want on top. So like if you want to wear a certain lipstick or gloss on top, go for it um, or just wear it on its own. But this really is some of the best of the best staying power for sure. And they're also not a complete uh, bare to get on. You know, they're smooth enough. So I'm going to go ahead and apply nude and nude is kind of a deep neutral. And sometimes we apply the color stay lip liner as you've seen me do like filling in the entire lips and then we layer something else on or another function of lip liner is sort of in cleanup mode as I've said so maybe you apply your lipstick and then it's less about the staying power but more about the neatness and you just want to kind of define your edge a little bit more maybe your nude was a little light and you want to blend a little bit of this into it that's an option too for your best staying power you will fill in everything okay I am leaving a little bit of lightness in the center of my lower lip because I have a co-lip love here to also mention and it is the Superstay Matte Ink Crayons. These wear so well, they set up on the lips. I mean, we're gonna create kind of a powerhouse thing here by layering some of this on top of one of these, but just on their own choose to use only that choose to use only this this would be the number one and this is coming right in at number two okay i've got the shade trust your gut here i believe that's what i grabbed yeah it's kind of a nude and i'm just gonna like add a little bit of that in here this is a really pretty matte nude lip that we're going to be creating i'm coloring it in just centrally and you can kind of do a little blending inward if you need to Smooth it out. Are you having your nails? How are you? It's such a pretty lip combo, isn't it, you guys? So again, this is the strongest staying power. This is right up there with it. There are so many beautiful shades. Um, you can have a long wearing look by just putting some lipstick over this, just putting a gloss over this, doing different combos with these also. Another thing that was up there in my mind was the um, Super Stay Vinyl. You know, those ones that you put on and they immediately have a little shine, but for what they are, like they really don't stay shiny for a huge chunk of the day. So um, <laughs> I have a creeper. These are just near and dear to my heart. I don't even put them in other storage. Like I keep them in a little holder that's right over here. So they're always handy. But friends, that is my finished look of top 10 long wearing products. I mean, they really are unbeatable. You can count on this look to wear and wear from the foundation and concealer standpoint to the eyes, to the lips. If you've got some different products that would make your long wearing top 10, let me know. But again, it's not just about their presence on the face at day's end, but it's what looks the most like it was originally applied you know what looks fresh still that is what I'm really thinking about today and this will go down as like the overall top best staying power things for sure so thanks for watching my friends I love you so much and I will see you again very soon bye and Biscuits is here Biscuits is here to say hello he says hi friends I have this beautiful eyeliner that I wear all the time it's the coffee. Bye-bye. <laughs>